everyone, this is Gary, and uh, I wanted to make kind of a follow-up video to my last video on stop-action splashes because I don't want to leave anybody with the impression that you have to buy really expensive studio strobes to do stop-action splash. Yes, there's a big advantage to a, a studio strobe because, especially those Einstein 640s, because they are particularly fast in terms of the flash duration. But speed lights are also fast enough. So I'm going to do a, a little demo using a minimum of equipment. And since um, there are so many CAD videos on YouTube, I figured I would incorporate a CAD video in here too. Now this is Sweet Pea. She's our cat and we love her. We've had her since she was a little kitten. Um, it's a big mistake to have a cat around when you're shooting indoors. Okay, the most important piece of gear in any photographic exercise is, of course, the camera. Uh, this is a Canon 40D, but I gotta tell you, the camera doesn't matter. Any of today's cameras are gonna do a great job, so let's not obsess over cameras. So, the most important piece of gear for this particular exercise is gonna be the flash. Now, this is a LumaPro. It's a fully manual flash. Nikon flashes and Canon flashes are by far the most expensive flashes you can buy. So I don't recommend going that route because basically in this exercise, you got to do it all manually anyway, right? So an ETTL or a CLS system aren't really going to help you here. This LumaPro is not cheap either. It's $160, but it's way cheaper than Canon or Nikon by about half. Uh, and it has basically two settings, right? You've got manual you've got manual power so you can set the output of the flash by this button on the right here and these these lights in the bottom indicate that and then on top here you have zoom you can set the zoom distance of the flash itself more on that in a second and then of course um, you can obviously turn the flash on or off and then there's a switch to make it slave which is a good thing all right so the luma pro 160 is a great flash. I highly recommend it, but it, you don't need to spend even $160. You can spend less than $100. Vivitar makes a pretty nice flash for less than $100, um, but you do need to get a flash. All right, so attached to this flash is a receiver, and um, on top of my camera is a transmitter, which is attached to my camera's hot shoe. When the shutter opens, it sends a signal to the hot shoe, uh, which triggers the transmitter, which triggers the receiver, which triggers the flash. So this all happens in a split second, in real time as it turns out. As far as other gear, I have a white piece of foam core board that I picked up from Staples for $3. I'm going to be using a reflector. This is a silver and a white reflector. This side is white, this side is silver. And um, I picked that up at Adorama for about 10 bucks. It folds up and fits inside this little case here, which is very handy. And then I am going to be using another flash, um, but you don't need to use the other flash. I'm basically going to be throwing. I'm going to be throwing some color onto this background with this second flash. To achieve that, um, I'm using a 50 degree honeycomb grid. I can't remember what I paid for these, but these were cheap. You can get. You can get. You can get some pretty expensive honeycomb grids, but these were really cheap. They're just made out of foam and plastic. Um, and then inside of it is a green gel. And that green gel is part of a set of gels that I bought, the Roscoe Strobist Collection. Um, there's a couple of uh, uh, CTO gels. There's a couple of um, cooling gels in here, and then different color gels. So you get a whole set, and they're just happen to be the right size to put over a flash so they're perfect for that that was about 10 bucks I got that at uh, B&H photo and um, really that's it for the gear okay there are two other pieces of gear I forgot to mention um, this is a remote um, shutter release and this is very handy, especially when you're working solo like I am, because I can use one hand to trigger my camera, and the other hand, I'll be dropping the line. And uh, so, you know, 
not necessary, but I think um, well worthwhile to get one of these. Uh, I didn't buy the Canon version. I bought this company called Zykos, and I got this on eBay for about, well, I think it was $12.95 or something. The Canon version is a lot more. And this works great. And the other thing is I'm tethering my camera in the Lightroom into my laptop. So uh, this is not a necessary piece of equipment either, but it just makes things very handy because I can see my results on screen, uh, you know, in real time. So it's a pretty cool setup. So there's a lot of light in this room and I need to set an exposure to cancel out all that light because I'm only going to be illuminating the scene with the flashes. So a setting of 1 30th at f22 is going to cancel out all the ambient light. So if I remove the off the um, the transmitter and just take a shot, I should get a blank for a black frame. And sure enough, if we look at this in Lightroom, there we go. So basically, I've canceled all the ambient light in the room. The next shot is going to be, um, you know, basically to just see how the light from the flash is working. And I'm, I'm turning on the flash now, and I'm just going to set its power to one quarter. That's kind of what I do. Uh, I just, whoops, I went too far. So um, that's usually where I start. So I'm going to take this card and flag it in front like this. Actually, I'll flag, I'll use this card to flag it in back. And I'll use this card to flag it in front. I could put a snoot on here, but that's just another piece of gear. Um, all right, so now that's going to basically, hopefully, direct the light. Take another shot. See where we are in Lightroom. Okay, good. The background is going black. Um, except I've got some of the just a little edge of this card in my shot so I have to move that a little bit and um, all right so basically I'm relatively satisfied but this is the reason that I have this reflector because I want some of that light to illuminate the other side of this fake line because when I actually start shooting and I'm propping it up with a box just like that all right, another shot. Check it out in Lightroom. And see what that does. Great. So now um, I'm ready to start dropping. Right now the camera is set to manual focus. The reason that I did that is because when I pushed the shutter button halfway down, if the lens was in autofocus, it was going to keep trying to focus. And you don't want that. So basically, once you've got your focal plane set, turn off autofocus and the lens will have that focal plane fixed. Alright, so now it's just up to me to try and time this right so I get a decent shot. Now I'm going to bring this light into play and what this is going to do, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to uh, basically, I don't know how, I'm going to also set it to one quarter power. And I'm guessing here, I'm just going to aim it at the backdrop and look at the difference. So this is going to be projecting some green, a green circle of light onto the backdrop. And it's being triggered as a slave. Okay, not bad at a quarter of a power. Going to aim it a little better. Ah, perfect. Okay, now I'm going to try and get a splash. Okay, I got one that I'm happy with. Um, you know, I'm not saying this is a great photo or anything. It's just a technical exercise. You could take this and run with it. You know, there's a lot of creative things you can do with this technique. Um, you know, I can't tell you how to be creative. Um, I have a hard enough time myself doing that. I guess that's pretty much it.